Hey, uh, I wanted to give a little video demo on Tonic. We did a um, uh, did a workshop here in Boston a couple weeks ago, and uh, some folks said that they would uh, they would have loved to have a screencast of what we did. Um, so I'm doing one now. I'm going to try and not say um as many times as I can, which is going to be really hard. So bear with me while I talk slowly and try not to say um. To get Tonic, you'll need to go to GitHub. The URL is github.com slash tonic audio slash tonic. You can just download it with this zip button. I've already downloaded it here. Here it is. Unzip it. Open it up. I'm going to show you the standalone demo because it's easiest to understand. So go in here, standalone demo. We're working on Windows and Linux projects, but for now, uh, this is only working. Oh, I said, um, um, I said it again. For now, Tonic is only supported on, uh, on Apple platforms. Opening up the standalone project, you'll need to have Xcode installed to follow any of this, and the latest version of Xcode is probably a good idea. What am I on? I'm on 4.6. Once you've got it downloaded, you can open up the stand Tonic standalone demo, and let's take a look at main.cpp. If you don't know already, Tonic is a pure C++ synthesis library. It's very much like uh, Max or pure data, when the big difference being that it's much newer and entirely, uh, entirely C++. So there's no graphical editor at all, and that's, to me, a huge plus. I really like coding, and I don't want to deal with a graphical graphical editor. I'm going to going to erase this stuff. So in here is how we actually define define a tonic synth, define the sounds that we're going to create. I'm going to run this just so you can hear what it sounds like. It'll take a minute to compile. First compile is slow, subsequent, subsequent compiles will be a lot faster. Okay, so just a few lines of code and some cool results. So you heard that Tonic can make some noise. The code for that noise is basically just right here. I'm going to erase all of this and start over with some just simple stuff. First of all, we need to make a tonic synth. We instantiate that with new synth, and you can just import tonic.h, that's got most of everything you'll need in it. So you should be able to instantiate a new synth and store that in an instance variable somewhere. This number we use is RT audio to get the sound out. There are other ways to do it. You can look at the iOS demo or the Open Frameworks demos for some other ways to actually get audio from Tonic to the speakers. So we've got our synth. We need to add some stuff to it. Uh, right now, if we play, no sound will come out. So let's make a sine wave. Sine wave is a subclass of generators. Generator is the audio rate 
base object. So a generator outputs a signal that's uh, 44,000 uh, numbers per second, basically. So generator equals sine wave. And let's give it a frequency of 100. That'll be 100 hertz. Then we can call set output gen on the synth. And we're going to have, um, sorry, I didn't name this variable. Sign, I'm just going to call it output. Output. In a moment, you'll be able to hear the sine wave. There it is, nice and loud. Uh, next, let's modulate the sine wave. Let's just multiply it by, let's multiply it by another sine wave. And let's make the frequency one. All of the methods, the setter methods on these objects can either take numbers or other objects and that's it's a little bit difficult to explain clearly for me at the moment but it makes for very things to be very flexible very easy to patch stuff together i really like it i'm going to make this a little higher and we've got sine wave 200 hertz sine wave multiplied by a one hertz sine wave i'll make it a little faster i'll do it five hertz, so that's five times per second. We're gonna have some kind of tremolo stuff. So there's our tremolo. What else can I show you? We've got effects. Uh, I'll show you the envelope actually next. If we want, uh, rather than a continuous tone, I want actual discrete notes to happen. So we've got ADSR. This is a common common thing you'll find in synthesizers. Uh, this is uh, an envelope generator. It stands for attack, decay, sustain, release. It creates a, um, well, you can look up what an envelope is if you, if you don't already know. Um, I can inst initialize this with you can, a uh, constructor can have no values or you can give it four values for it, the A, the D, the S, and the R. I'll do it a zero for attack. I'll give it just a little, little bit so we don't get a pop. And then 10th of a second for the decay and then no sustain and no release. And now we need to set a trigger. Otherwise it won't trigger. There's an object called Control Metro, and this brings me to the other big type of objects that we'll be working with. We've got generators, which output audio signals, and we've got control generators, which output control signals. And the main difference between the two of those is that control generator, uh, the signal, it, it has to, it calculates the, the value of the signal uh, many fewer times per second. But anyway, we've got a type of control generator called the control metro. Equals control, control metro. This is a metronome. It outputs a pulse. We can add it to a trigger and it'll, maybe we can add it to a, a trigger method and it will trigger whatever we want to trigger. We can set the BPM, beats per minute. Let's do 300 beats per minute. So that'll trigger 300 times per minute. And then we assign the trigger, assign the metro to the trigger of the envelope. Now let's listen to that. So it's no longer no longer just a continuous tone anymore. I'm gonna do that a little slower. And we're gonna make the envelope a little longer. Let's do it one second. 
And I'm also going to just get some random values in here. So rather than a number, I can add another object for the frequency. I can add either a control generator or a generator. I'm gonna add a control generator called control random. Control random, minimum, um, let's do 200, maximum. Notice how I can just chain the methods together. All of these setter methods return whatever they're being called on, which makes for a nice syntax, I think. So maximum 1,000, control metier O takes a trigger object. Every time it's triggered, the value of this object will change, and we'll use the same metro object for the trigger. Should have some nice random noises. I don't know. It's all a little loud. I'm going to just multiply this by 0 0.2. It'll quiet it down. We can listen again. If you're a weirdo like me, that sounds sort of interesting and nice. Let's put some effects on it. We can have another, uh, another control generator is the stereo delay. Let's do this. Output equals output. And uh, I'll do it the easiest to understand way. So we instantiate a stereo delay object give it the constructor a right delay and a left delay. I'll do 1 and 1.1 as the delay times. And then we'll call input. And we will put output into input. So we're calculating a new signal and then putting that back into this output signal. Let's have a listen to that. All right, well, that's about all you need to get some very basic stuff going. If you want to look at all the different objects you can use, you can open up tonic.h, and you'll have a list of core stuff, which you don't need to worry about too much, uh, a bunch of different oscillators, a bunch of different effects, and these control generator generators. There's lots of nice stuff you can do with them. If you've got questions, what should you do if you've got questions? You can write us, um, write us a comment on the issues or send an email. Let's see, just, there's the best way to answer questions. I'll think about this and then get back to you. So if you've got questions about anything I've shown or anything about Tonic in general, you can post to the Tonic Audio Users Google group. To find it, you can go to groups.google.com and search for Tonic Audio Users, and it should come right up. Anybody can join, so join the group, ask us a question. That's all for now.